The Ruin DLC trailer is finally out. So much lore has been teased and the DLC comes out in July. This is all huge, so slices, put on your aprons and let's bake ourselves a theory. First, let's gather our ingredients and just go top to bottom on this trailer. First off, as a few folks have pointed out on Twitter, this isn't soon after Security Breach. With the amount of wear and tear around, the staggering amount of graffiti, and even the size of the coverings on the front window, this seems to take place weeks or even months after the collapse of the Pizzaplex. Meaning Gregory would have had to survive in the Pizzaplex, in a place that's very dark, implying a lack of resources, including including food and water, for weeks and or months. Speaking of Gregory, we get voice lines from him throughout the trailer. All of them are, quote, Cassie, I hope you get this message. I'm trapped here at the Pizzaplex or what's left of it. I don't have time to go into how I got here, but you've got to help me out. Save me, Cassie, please. It's so dark down here. And don't give up on me yet. We get one more voice line, presumably from Cassie, our player character, which is simply just, Gregory, run, which she says into this Roxanne walkie-talkie. This next thing might not be important, but I love it and want to mention it. There's this keyboard clicker water drinker bird thingy, but it's styled like a Glamrock Chica. I love it, I want it. Next is the look of the Pizzaplex. Something happened here, but it's not collapsed. Like obviously it's been ruined, but it's strange. It's not all on fire or all burnt or all collapsed to the ground, but there's a lot of wrong things here. It's flooded in sections. The mini golf place is like thrown to the side. Side. Staff bots have been ripped to shreds. I wouldn't doubt that whatever happened at the Pizzaplex caused the animatronics to go haywire and they did all this damage. Speaking of the main cast of animatronics, they all look great here. All of them are worse off than they were at the end of any of the endings in Security Breach, but that is a good thing. They look terrifying. Chica seems even more destroyed somehow, and we get this strange shot of her being carried on some conveyor belt. Sun and Moon have officially merged into, I guess, Eclipse? And it's super creepy. I love it. Monty is almost entirely endoskeleton at this point, save for his giant teeth and flecks of red hair at the top. Which, by the way, this is the best design. He is super scary. I love him. But the next two are the most curious ones. Glamrock Freddy and Roxanne Wolf. We have what looks like Glamrock Freddy in the rubble of Phaser Blast, but we only get to see his lower half. And we have Roxy, who not only seems to have been ripped apart, but seems to have added pieces to herself. This is not Roxy's endoskeleton as we see in her shattered design. She's gained something to look this way. Actually, my thumbnail artist Barbadroid on Twitter, which you should go follow because he's really cool and talented, suggested that her new endoskeleton head could be from Glamrock Freddy, explaining why we don't get to see his head in the trailer. I think that's possible, but we'll just bookmark that for now. More about this Cassie character, she seems to have a few devices at her disposal. The camera thing that we see on Security Breach TV where we first saw this trailer is one of them. It has a different UI than the cameras we see on the Faz watch and also has an intercom feature that could be some kind of luring device. It's hard to tell. She also has the aforementioned Roxy Talkie and this strange remote thing that she uses to access a panel. Maybe she's trying to hack into it, it's not clear. We also get this weird interaction with Cassie and Roxy, where Roxy grabs Cassie's arm and looks at it inquisitively, a stark contrast to the basically jump scare we get with Monty. Finally, most interesting of all, at the very end of the trailer, we see Cassie put on the Vanny mask and see the Pizzaplex in a weird digital space. Soon after, we see this wild looking creature. Ooh, this thing is packed. Let's start mixing our ingredients and see what kind of theories start to form. I think the largest and most front of the mind theory possible is about the name Cassie. <clears throat> Is that Cassidy, AKA the Cassidy, AKA the vengeful spirit, AKA the one you should not have killed, AKA Golden Freddy? As much as I want to say yes, because then my video last week would be right, I hesitate, mainly because this girl is very much a live human girl and Cassidy died in the eighties. So I'm not sure. There's probably definitely some connection here, but I don't think it's that direct that it's literally Cassidy. Also, I hope it's not another Jeremy situation, AKA FNAF just using a name again as a red herring. This, I think, think will be the main question surrounding the game. After all, we have Princess Quest, whose main sprite, although it has been changed, was named Cassidy. Up until now, we linked that to the Cassidy from the Missing Child incident, but maybe it was linked to this Cassie. The question then is, is this Cassie and the Princess Quest princess linked to Cassidy, or are they just linked to each other? Is it the chicken or the egg? I'm not sure yet, but I hope we'll get more information in the DLC. I've got this in the letters, I just don't have any way to like... Use it. I need something else. Ah, perfect. <clears throat> Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan Injury Law Firm. 
Injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. Because Morgan & Morgan has brought everything about a law firm to the 21st century. It is so easy to submit a claim. You can submit your case details, sign contracts, send pictures and medical records, all from your phone. You can even text your lawyers. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever leaving the couch. And there's so many reasons to. For one, they're America's biggest injury law firm, which means they have the resources to fight to get you what you need. And those resources come for free free. Their fee is free. In fact, you only pay if you win. There are no upfront costs, sign-up fees, or anything like that. If you don't win your case, you pay nothing. Think about a time you were injured like a car accident. Submitting an injury claim after a car accident is a no-brainer. Don't overthink it. You deserve protection for your rights, and an injury law firm like Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. And all of this is so easy to do. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim with Morgan & Morgan. You don't need to visit a a law office or sit through a consultation, you can just open your mobile phone and do it. In fact, if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash rytoast or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. Thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. Morgan & Morgan for the people. A smartwatch. Well, it's worth a shot, I guess. And just wrap it around my lens. Huh, I have an interface now. Okay, letters, a lens, and an interface. I can definitely send a message. Speaking of confusing identities, I think myself and a lot of others were right in calling Gregory's bluff. At least the help me bluff in the poster. Let's look at the pizzeria. This thing has been ruined for a long time. Staggering amounts of graffiti go pretty deep in. Coverings go all the way up the front of the window. This does not seem recent in any way. I think Gregory surviving in here for this long is kind of a stretch. I think, as I have before, that ruin is a trap. Gregory isn't down there, but whatever is, is pretending to be Gregory to lure a child in. We actually have an example of this in the books. Whether or not Burn Trap is the Mimic, which is a whole can of worms, we get a clear and repeated example of the Mimic in the epilogues pretending to be a child to lure the teens into a trap. It does it so much that they catch on to it and try to use it against it. And what do we get in the trailer? The voice of a child over a radio asking for help. However, I will say a point against this theory is the voice line we get from Cassie, Gregory, run. This implies that she sees him in danger, which would negate this, but there's a couple of explanations that counter that. Either she just heard something dangerous and told him to run, or whatever she saw was on a security tape that was recorded throughout the course of Security Breach, which is completely likely. Essentially, who knows? I also want to talk about the selective aggression of some of the animatronics. Like Monty and Chica, yeah, that works. They're roaming the halls looking for you. Monty is super aggressive. Normal stuff here. But Eclipse and Roxy seem strange to me. Eclipse just gives us this wave, which could imply that Sun is the one that's mostly in control here. Although, a friendly wave and then being chased down to kill you is not uncharacteristic of Moon. That's kind of his whole deal. So it's hard to tell either way. I think the strangest occurrence is with Roxy. She grabs Cassie's arm, looks at it, and then seems almost confused. As if curious instead of aggressive. We know these animatronics are corrupted by Afton right down to their core. I wonder if with these gadgets, we counter hack them to try to take them back from Afton. It could be a fun plot line. It'd be really sweet actually to give the animatronics a redemption and free them as well. However, something I don't think that can be turned to the good side is whatever the hell this is. Like, First Instinct said that this is going to be the long lost Glamrock Bonnie that we finally get to see in the DLC. And maybe. After all, it's definitely a rabbit and it has those bass playing claws we know so well about. But then, why is it all glitchy and stuff? I've heard some people say that this is the current form that Glitchtrap is taking. And I think that's most probable. After all, like I said, it's a rabbit that's glitchy. Glitch trap. And if we see a digital form of the Pizzaplex through this Vanny mask, I think that makes this even more likely. Especially the help wanted Vanny mask that's been used to communicate with Glitch Trap. It just lines up. However, there's one more aesthetics based argument that I think is worth mentioning here. We have large white eyes with tear stains, a large white set of teeth, all in a rabbit form. There's a big argument being made that this is the Mimic 1 program, which, to be fair, is just Glitch Trap. So I guess it's kind of the same argument, but this would lean more into the book speculation side of things. And I could see that, especially considering the fact that whatever this is seems to be using the same tactic as the mimic in the epilogues, luring kids into a trap using voice lines over some sort of radio. Finally, this all brings me to this. 
I think this trailer can confirm what the canon ending of Security Breach is, or at least can confirm what ending leads us to the DLC. And it's not the one you think, although I predicted it back in October. I had since changed my mind and predicted something else, so technically I'm wrong, but still at one point I got it right. So the slices, let's pop our mixture into the oven and see what kind of horrors rise. What is the state of the Pizzaplex in which we see it? It's in disrepair, but it hasn't completely crumpled or burnt to the ground. The animatronics are barely functional, but they're all there. We see the main four, at least most of them, as we only see the lower half of Freddy, Sun Moon, presumably some version of Afton, but we don't see Vanny, although we do see her mask fully accessible. What endings could possibly lead us to this outcome? Well, most controversially, I don't think the burn trap ending can. This damage looks too severe. I feel like if this happened directly under the pizzaplex, the whole thing would have collapsed and burnt to the ground. It wouldn't be walkable at all, you would need to excavate your way through. Not only that, but we see Gregory and Freddy on a hill looking off into the sunset at the end. So is this some weird coma dream that Gregory has after getting a rock on his head? I don't think so. If the only way to explain this ending leading into the DLC is that this part of the ending isn't canon? That's a weak argument. I think there's a better argument to be made here. I mean, either that or they escape and then go back for some reason and then get trapped off screen, which kind of sucks. Even if Gregory isn't here, we know Freddy is. At least that's what this looks like. So frankly, we can write off the van ending, the fire escape ending, and the good vanny ending. Because in all of these, Freddy leaves the pizzaplex in some way or another, which really only leaves us two endings. The bad van ending and leaving through the front doors. The bad Vandy ending I hesitate though because Freddy 100% dies in it. Yes, it frees up the Vanny mask because she dies too, but it would be weird for Steel Wool to pull a, it was terrible, I died. I got better though for Freddy. That, that feels weird. So the only one that's left is the front door ending? The one where we just leave and then get dragged back by Vanny? I mean, that works. Freddy is still there and Gregory would be trapped, but then why is the Vanny mask available? this still doesn't feel right. The only ending where the Vanny mask is left alone is the good Vanny ending, but Freddy leaves in that one. Or does he? He doesn't actually. Just the Freddy head does. His body is ripped up and left for dead in Phaser Blast, but the head is taken. That's it. That's the canon ending. The three star good Vanny ending is the canon one that leads us to the DLC. It leaves a Vanny mask on the ground to be picked up by Cassie, and it leaves the lower half of a Freddy animatronic in Phaser Blast. One that they didn't want to show the upper half of because a headless Freddy would give it away. But what does all this mean? Well, Vanessa, Gregory, and Freddy aren't in the Pizzaplex anymore. The William Afton victim support group is off eating ice cream on a hill somewhere, and Cassie is being led inside a Pizzaplex into a maze with no prize, not finding Gregory, but finding whatever is pretending to be him. But what do you think? I know this video is late, but I had a kid this week, so it'd be nice. Also, if this video wasn't late, then my DLC video would have come out next week, so silver linings and all that. But do you think Cassie is literally Cassidy? Whether or not you do, if you want to know how Cassidy could be involved in the Pizzaplex, I actually just made a whole video detailing everything we know about it last week, so go and check that out. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best patrons, the Toasted Slices, Emberisk, Charlie Bean, Luffy Puppy, Stormy Chow, Just BKZ, Lola Fembo, The Viper 26, Lehan, James Reiner, Emily De La Sierra, Snow Blossom, Comrade Nika, Raven Eris, Glamrock Bonnie is an Agani, Bucky Ray, Mystic Angel, Untrusted Life, MD Switchy, Flip, Loose, Hyperdroid, Emmy Layton, Sharpwire, Kitty Demon Overkill YT, Ryunosuke Akutagawa, Anger Mations, Nayubi, Cursed Galati, Otter Pops 456, Dusk Enith, ICG, Silly Goose Central, Mac Dave, Urfan, Sumi, Moose, Kiwi Dylan, Sharktooth, Inkline Game Studio, Big Fart, Sky Set, Day Loves Bunny, Alex P, Mercy, Alt Name 7, FNAF Boys, Wesley Harden, Simp Moodles, Kylie Del Pazzi, Chickpea, Funtime, Thomas Harris, A Human, Lavender, Chance Marie, Balin42, Supermoosh, Blues Weird Clues, Dedicated, Fizzles, Danny Meanses, Carno Team, Mimi, Invader Jewels, Jeffrey Tilbury, Obnoxious, Rowan Heath, Queen Coda, and Dionysus. And until next time, as always, stay toasty, Slices.